Welcome to this episode of the Blueprint series in which we're taking a look at Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Butterfly. I'm going to be showing you the ins and outs of the album, how it was made, and we're going to make three reference tracks that would sound like they would go straight on this album. And I'm going to be showing you all the tips and tricks and how I made them. But before we get into any beat making, let's take a look at this album and what makes it so great. To Pimp a Butterfly is the follow-up album to Kendrick Lamar's major label debut, Good Kid Mad City, released back in 2015. The album is honest, fearful and unapologetic according to Lamar. It incorporates funk, spoken word poetry and jazz influences, but mainly it's one of the purest and most well-executed examples of a modern hip-hop album. The title of this album has a much deeper meaning than on the surface. The pimp Kendrick is referring to is the music industry and the butterfly being the pure yet vulnerable artist. The act of pimping, rather than being an exploitation of women as it is typically thought of, is now being used to describe the way in which up-and-coming artists are being exploited by money-hungry music executives. On the other hand, perhaps the butterfly metaphor is who Kendrick is now. Before his success, he was a caterpillar, feeding off his environment and building his cocoon around him, signifying his transition to success, emerging from the cocoon once ready as a bright butterfly flying high towards its true potential. This metaphor is just a small hint at the depth of this album, with many songs and lyrics having two or sometimes three different meanings, such as the track These Walls, meaning the walls of a woman's vagina, the walls of a prison cell, and the walls of Kendrick's mind. Although this album is a hip-hop album, it's more like an audible stage performance, with the poetry, interludes and voices all adding to the dramatic effect. Over the course of the album, Kendrick Lamar plays fragments of a poem before finally performing it to Tupac Shakur for the conclusion of the album. Featuring real audio samples from a 1994 interview with Shakur, using it to have what feels like a real conversation with the late rapper. Racial inequality, despair, alcohol abuse, drug abuse, and institutional prejudice are all subjects featured in the lyrics on this album. But Kendrick's biggest influence is Compton, where he grew up, responsible for the impact that gang culture, racial discrimination, as well as substance abuse had on him. And these themes are a combination of struggles Kendrick has gone through before his rise to fame and after giving this album a down-to-earth and relatable sound of Kendrick's life. Despite having a strong and heartfelt message, the album still delivers sonically. The smooth, jazzy keys and saxophones, mixed with bouncy hip-hop drums and funky bass grooves, provide an exquisite flavour for the listener. And this album is so different to any kind of musical project out there, with it being so much more than just music, more so a real story with chapters, substance and different characters to focus on. The way the story is told through the various voices and personas that Kendrick gives us is a huge credit to his artistic ability and vocal range. It's unapologetic, real, visceral, and above all, an honest depiction of the life of a young black male from Compton. The album presents a strong West Coast theme with helpings of jazz and funk thrown in, giving it a 90s hip hop feel with a twist. The West Coast vibe comes from none other than the legend himself, Dr. Dre, who executive produced the album. In fact, the majority of the album was created at Dre's No Excuses studio in LA, also known as Tom Tom. Dre was really hands-on with Kendrick's previous album, Good Kid, Mad City, but this time around, Kendrick preferred if Dre did not mix the album, thus leaving it up to Derek Ali, also known as Mixed by Ali. One thing Dre did pass on to Ali was to mix the album on a real SSL desk, just as he had always done. To Pimp a Butterfly was mixed on the same desk as legendary hip-hop albums The Chronic and Eminem's Slim Shady LP. The classic analogue board works wonders for the album, especially when you hear how intricate and elaborate the sound is. Ali quoted as saying, I feel like I'm touching the music and I'm part of it, allowing him to freely move his hands and connect with what he's doing physically instead of through plugins on a computer. Perhaps this is what gives the album such an artistic feel. To Pimp a Butterfly is a hip-hop album, but the approach to creating it is far from by the book. Kendrick opted for real live instruments over the traditional sampling method. However, some samples still make it onto the album. For instance, the track Mama features soothing vocals and lush keys from La La Hathaway's On Your Own. Speaking of samples, this episode of The Blueprint is sponsored by the number one online sampling marketplace, Tracklib. Browse over 80,000 original samples across every era, genre or style of music imaginable. With Tracklib's advanced search browser, the days of endlessly scrolling through YouTube for samples is over. When you find the sample you like, simply click download and start chopping it up instantly. No need to waste time working out the key or BPM as every sample is already labelled for you. 
One of the main reasons some producers are put off using samples is the clearance issues, but with Tracklib, it's simple and easy to clear literally any sample on the website. Sampling has been at the heart of making music for decades. No matter what kind of music you make, sampling is always a must. To give sampling a try for yourself, just click the link below and get a free 30 day trial and 15 download credits. Not happy with the service? No worries. You can cancel at any time during the 30 day period and you won't be charged. Thanks Tracklib. And the real magic of this album comes from these live recordings, courtesy of Thundercat, Terrace Martin, Raki, Tay Beast and Soundwave, all in-house producers for TDE, Top Dog Entertainment. Breaking down this album, I see three distinct styles of music. Starting off, you've got the smooth, jazzy hip-hop vibe with a bit of a West Coast influence in there. Tracks such as Mama, Complexion, You, You Ain't Gotta Lie and These Walls demonstrate this sound. Secondly, you've got the more mainstream funky tracks such as King Kunta and All Right, with the bass line driving the song and catchy drums providing the groove for Kendrick to flow on. And finally, you've got the hard West Coast boom bap instrumentals heard on tracks Hood Politics and Black of the Berry, with hard hitting drums, dark piano melodies and strings. So starting off with our first beat of this video, this one is based off of the track Hood Politics. It's a really bouncy, boom bap kind of vibe. And this style of music is responsible for quite a big section on the album. So we had to do this one justice. The biggest gem I can give you guys for this one is definitely get your hands on a Splice subscription. You have to remember these beats were made with live instrumentation. So live bass, live guitar, live strings, live synth. In order for you to replicate the most accurate sound possible, you need to have access to all these different kinds of sounds. Splice is the best place to go for that. Starting off, we found this hi-hat loop that is gonna get our bounce going and enable us to start building on top of that. So starting off with our chords here, we've got some triad chords. We're working in F sharp minor. We found ourselves this proper nice drum beat as well in Splice. This one gets your head bopping for sure. And now we've got our bass. So I'm using Scarby Rickenbacker bass guitar. Great contact library. If you have contact, go check it out. So I realized that that chord progression wasn't enough for this beat. So I decided to start creating a counter melody. We're running our reference track Hood Politics through lala.ai, which is an AI software that can basically separate the vocals from a beat. So I can then have a clean Kendrick acapella. So you can actually go and see what Kendrick would sound like on your beat easily. But if you want to hear Kendrick on our beat, you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer. When you have two notes in a scale that are this close together, when you alternate back and forth between them, you get a really intense kind of sound. So 
So if you guys are looking for a plugin that's gonna really add a layer of randomness to your melody, Portal is definitely the one for you. Um, if you wanna get Portal and also support me as a creator, as a producer, click the link below, click my link and you can get it. And that's that beat done, but you can't listen to it yet because we have to make the second part of this beat. So what I'm doing is I'm creating my first beat, which we've done here now, and we're gonna add a transition, and then the second half of the song is gonna have a completely different vibe to it. You're technically getting four beats this video, so yeah. Make sure you leave a like on this one right now, and also while you're down there, hit the subscribe as well if you're not already. So kicking off our second beat, we're on tracklib.com, looking for a sample, looking for some inspiration, and that's what Tracklib is perfect for. It just has so much content on there, similar to Splice, but in a very different way with just loads of really nice original samples that have not been touched, that are ready for you to dive in and check out. So if you want to start flipping some samples yourself, click the link below, sign up today, 30 day free trial. But we found this sample here called Vishnu by Bremer McCoy. It's a nice, calm, jazz chord progression, but very simple which is what I really liked about it. And as soon as I heard this one chord, I knew instantly that this was the vibe. But we're not just gonna sample it, we're gonna take it to the next level. And we're running it through a plugin called Melodyne. So we need to find ourselves a nice key sound, whether it be a Rhodes, a piano. I'm actually using Flex, which is a free VSC and FF Studio. Moving on to our bass, we're using Scarby Rickenbacker guitar bass again. And this contact library here is, I would say, the most accurate bass guitar you can get. So if you want to replicate the sound used by Thundercat, he kills it on the bass guitar for this album, so. And this time I decided, you know what, we're not going to use a drum loop, we're going to make our own. With the help of the FPC plugin, we can easily map drum sounds to each of the virtual pads and just play in a drum beat. And that was how I found the bounce of this beat. And then I found this super cool sound in Omnisphere. It just fit the vibe perfectly. It's one of them ones where you click it, it plays at the perfect time, and you go, what was that? And I just added it. Here's another really, really cool sound that you guys need to check out. It's like a, a vocal ensemble, but it just gives me massive Kendrick vibes and the way we've done it with this kind of melody as well. So again, we have another VST recommendation here, guys. If you want to give your melody that really kind of messed up sound, whether you're making like some lo-fi type stuff, Thermal is a great VST. And that is our second part of that beat done, finished. So now we can work on our bridge between the two. So starting off, I wanted to end our original beat on a nice kind of like suspenseful finish, I suppose. And the way I did that was I half time our drums and then I looped our kind of uh, our key sound at the end there to create this nice repetitive melody. 
To make it sound more like a Kendrick kind of interlude bridge, I've then just looped his vocal, pitched it down an octave as well, so it's a bit more of a dark sound. And then we're just gonna slowly start bringing in our second beat. So last thing before I let you guys listen to this first beat, I found this sample here called Black Blood in the Mississippi Mud. Listen to the lyrics, it just fits the theme of this album perfectly. I just had to put it in at the start there um, and ended it with a nice little delay to leave you again in a suspenseful kind of state. You guys can listen to the first beat now, also featuring some Kendrick vocals as well, if we don't get copyrighted. Fingers crossed, you know what I'm saying? So that is beat number one done. Again, that one was inspired by a combination of hood politics and how much a dollar costs. But moving on to a completely different vibe now. We're not coming with just rap beats this time, okay? We're taking it to the next level now. Check it out, it's getting funky. Starting off our second beat slash song, whatever you want to call it. We're starting off in Tracklib. Um, and I found myself this really nice kind of neo soul sample. So we're back on the FPC again, and we're going to be playing in some nice calm drums, just a nice groove, you know? See, none of my sounds are on the grid at all. And that's going to give us a really natural drum groove, like it was actually played. Same thing with our hi-hat here. It's not on the grid at all. And if we look at these velocities down here as well, we've positioned them in the way that is going to give us an even more bouncy sound. So that's how you really achieve bounce with hi-hats. So if you guys are ever working with samples and you're not quite sure on the bass sound, check out Melodyne. If you look for the long notes at the bottom, that is usually how you should have your bass. So we want to have a more funky kind of bass now, a more West Coast style bass. I've just got it in little grooves like dun dun, dun dun. It's not doing too much. It's just providing that backing kind of bass sound, you know? There's no long sustain notes in there. Also, I wanted to give this one a bit more of a lo-fi sound, so I've just added in this nice perk sound here. This is the key right here to seeing if an artist will actually sound good on your beat. I recommend you guys just experiment with that because that's gonna give you the best feedback you can ever get on your beat. So that nice backing vocal we've got here from our sample, I've created a duplicate of it and pitched it up an octave. When they're layered together, it gives it a nice kind of effect. So this is a great plugin if your drums aren't really as fat as you want them to be, you want them to slap a bit more, be a bit more punchy, check out Diablo, it's a great plugin. Coming to the end of this beat, I wasn't really feeling it, so what I did was grabbed a sound shifter, so the whole thing's pitched down minus two now, and I switched up the bass pattern a little bit as well. And that, my friends, 
is beat number two. Done. Wrapped. <laughs> I can spot you a mile away. I can see your insecurities fitting all on your face. So predictable your words. I know what you're gonna say. Who you fooling or you assuming you can just come and hang with the homies, but your level of realness ain't the same. Circus acts on the attract those that entertain. Small talk, we know that it's all talk. We live in the land factory every time they mention your name. Ask where the hoes had to impress me. Ask where the money bags to impress me. Say you got the burning stash to impress me. It's all in your head, homie. And the world don't respect you, and the culture don't accept you, but you think it's all love. And the girls gonna neglect you once your parody is done. Reputation can protect you. That one there is its own animal. I love that one. Like I said, we technically have four beats in this video, so I'm not gonna leave you guys hanging on that one. I've got one more little thing to show you at the end here. Yeah, this one here is inspired by the song King Kunza. So we covered the hard hip hop sound, smooth, funky, jazzy kind of sound. And now we're covering the mainstream sound, just like we said in the intro, you know what I'm saying? We're ticking all the boxes in this one, guys. So let's get straight into the final beat. The main element that gives King Kunza its vibe, its groove, is that bass guitar. So I wanted to start with that. We're using Scarby Rickenbacker bass. I'm starting with a simple four to the four drum beat inspired by King Kunza, same drum bouts. using that classic tambourine sound again we've been using the entire video. We've added in a nice counter melody here. And this is a, a very similar melody as used on uh, King Kunta, I believe. I think we made a good selection of beats for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, please be sure to leave a like down below. I need to give everyone their credit real quick. I'm giving everyone their flowers. This video was not just me. A big shout out to Muaz Safraz uh, on Instagram. He was a massive help with the research part of these videos because they do require a lot of research. Shout out to Hayes, my editor. Great guy. Couldn't have done it without you. That's who's responsible for these new fancy intros we've got now at the start of these videos. And um, of course, shout out to Tractive as well for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate all the love in these episodes. If you follow me in the gram at Prod by Jack. Check out my sound kits. Link down in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Have a great day. Peace.